Dear Esther is a special game for a few reasons, but one of its traits that stands out the most to me is just how much trust it places in the player. It trusts that the player will want to explore its world without the promise of achievement or challenge. That's huge. Game experiences are heavily defined by challenges and objectives. Tetris? Make lines, don't let the blocks get too high. Call of Duty? Shoot the bad guys, don't get shot. Spelunky? Collect loot, don't die. Dear Esther sounds pretty weird if you try and analyse it through this traditional lens. You walk through environments, there is no combat, no puzzles, no conflict of any sort. Your objective, if you can call it that, is pure traversal. That's why games such as Dear Esther have been termed, sometimes disparagingly, as walking simulators. But I feel that viewing these games this shallowly does them a disservice, because there is a challenge and deeper objective at play in Dear Esther, it's just never stated. The challenge is to understand the story that you're being told. Especially in 2008, this was pretty unprecedented. The challenge within Dear Esther doesn't come from within the game itself, it comes from the player and their understanding. It's not like there's a fail state for not understanding. There's no quiz at the end of the game where you have to correctly state what the narrator's metaphors meant. But I think to get the most out of Dear Esther, just like a great work of literature, you need to spend a little bit of time thinking about it. This isn't quite as novel a concept anymore as it was when Dear Esther was released. For instance, 2015's The Beginner's Guide seemed to revel in the way its ambiguities encouraged discussion. But I can't think of many games before Dear Esther where that sort of post-game discussion was such a pivotal part of the experience. Because the challenge is happening specifically in the mind of the player, rather than the mechanics of the game, Dear Esther gave me some experiences that I hadn't found anywhere else. I scoured through shipwrecked remains not for any achievements, but entirely to try and understand what happened there. I spent time exploring someone's living quarters in a cave, not expecting to find some item I could use, but to try and understand the mindset of the person that used to live there. Dear Esther remains one of the best examples of using locations alone to tell a story. I've been focusing on just how interesting I think the central mechanic of interpreting poetry is, but the aesthetic presentation of Dear Esther is also extremely noteworthy. Jessica Curry's classical soundtrack propels the exploration with a collection of subtly developing harmonic patterns and string motives. It's an ethereal masterpiece that perfectly fits its use here. And the visuals have held up incredibly well. In my opinion, Dear Esther offers up jaw-dropping landscapes which still compete with big budget releases. If any of this sounds interesting to you, there's never been a better time to pick it up. Dear Esther recently received ports to the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, and a re-release on Steam with updated visuals ported to the Unity engine. If you give this game some patience and trust, it will offer up an engaging experience that is still rarely equaled. Thanks for watching. If this is your first time to my channel, please consider subscribing to see more of these discussions in the future. I also make a whole bunch of covers of video game music, so if that's your thing, you can check that out with the cards on screen now. Take care of yourself, and I'll catch you soon.